بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم I am your host Anam Rizvi Welcome to this special Muharram transmission conducted by my TV. In today's show, Azadari in Britain interviews with Dr. Mudassir Ahmed, Dr. Sayyid Hadi Imam, Dr. Sayyid Hussain Raza Rizvi. Dr. Essen Zafar Zadi Meet the IMI team COVID vaccine efficacy Dr. Annie Khazalbash A special look at University Medical Complex Now we are going to look at Shiaism in the UK. How did Shia Islam spread in the UK and the people who settled here? Islam is the second largest religion in the United Kingdom. There are over 3.3 million Muslims in the United Kingdom itself. The first Muslims to migrate were from East African, Iranian, Iraqi, Afghani, Lebanese, Bahraini, Saudi Arabian and Yemeni descent. Shias are settled in London, Birmingham, Leicester, Manchester, Peterborough, Leeds, Wessex, Malton, Milton and etc. Although the familiarity of the people of Britain with Islam goes back to Umayyad conquest of Hispania, the Crustates and the British colonial era. During the 20th century, 
Muslims from Africa migrated to Europe, some of which found themselves in England. Most of these migrators were given British citizenship. The first British city with a mosque was walking in Surrey, but the universities of Cambridge and Oxford had already established as Eastern studies and Arabic Islamic studies seeds years before, and thus were familiar with Islam and Islamic culture. In decades following the partition of India and Pakistan, many British Indian Muslims from Pakistan, Bangladesh and India settled down in England. To this day, British Asian constitute to the majority of the Muslims in the Britain, alongside significant Turkish, Arab and Somali communities, which make up also about 100,000 British converts, a number steadily rising. In 2015, The Economist reported more than 400,000 Shias in the UK. Shia Muslims make up approximately 15% of the estimated 2.8 million Muslims living in the UK. come from a range of background, including South Asians. Shia mosques have been established across the country, with notable community leaders, reciters, poets and Islamic scholars to have arisen from this thriving community. Masjids in Imam Barga include Husseini Islamic Center in Stenmo Hero, which act as one of the main Shia mosques in the Britain, as well as Islamic Centre England in London. There is also a Masjid Ali in Luton, one of the largest Imam Bargas in the UK. Others include Al Masjid Al Husseini in North Hold, Ealing, and Imam Kui Islamic Centre in Queen's Park in Brent. <laughs> Across the country, Manchester, Birmingham and London have the most Shia residents. The community is thriving and bustling, hosting majales, mafils, milad and community even throughout the year. It is in this setting that Imamia Maddox International UK chapter started in the United Kingdom. <laughs> After almost 30 years of service to the humanity, IMI is launching its very own television channel called MyTV or Maddox International Television. MyTV is a scientific and research platform. This platform is for Muslims around the world to come and share their ideas and network. Now let's watch a video about MyTV. We, the humans, are restless. We are dreamers, inventors, adventurers, innovators, healers. We adapt to the harshest of climates. And when tested to the limits, we come up with crazy solutions. We are designed to shatter myths. We are known to love the challenges and that's where the revolution starts and that's how we find the answers of our questions.
The era between 7th till 12th century is considered to be the golden age of Islamic science. The foundation of modern science and research was laid down with the greats like Abu al Qasim al Zahravi, father of modern surgery and the father of operative surgery. Ibn al Nafis, father of circulatory physiology and anatomy. Abbas ibn Farnas, father of medieval aviation. Jabir ibn Hayyan, father of chemistry. Ibn Khaldun, father of sociology, historiography and modern economics. Ibn Sina, father of early modern medicine. Al Khwarizmi, most renowned as the father of algebra. But somewhere down the lane, we lost that drive for discovery and the wonders of research were lost to the dust of time. Imamia Medics International, one of the world's leading healthcare, education, relief, and disaster management non profit organization, has been striving hard to reconnect to the roots. Founded over 25 years ago, IMI's membership comprises of doctors, scientists, healthcare professionals, as well as philanthropists from around the world working to serve humanity in all corners of the world. Stepping up in modern times, IMI is launching its very own multilingual digital channel. MITV, a long-standing vision to create a unique platform to fill the void of holistic, scientific and social channel that serves the need of Muslim world. Aiming to give you the best, MITV will produce diversified programming on medical advancement, scientific research, culture, current affairs, sports, women issue, lifestyle, history as well as special shows for our youth. MITV will be a family TV which has something for everyone. With programs in several languages such as English, Urdu, French, German, Arabic and Persian, MITV is a platform for diverse voices of the Muslim to come together and share their scientific achievement. So tune into our arena to grow, improve and become the greatest in your field. My name is uh, Sayyid Irfan Raza. I'm a nephrologist. I'm currently working in New Jersey. Uh, we have a private practice of six physicians. Uh, we cover a large part of the Bergen County here in New Jersey. I'm a graduate of uh, Dow Medical College in Karachi, and I moved here in 1993. Uh, the reason to choose this profession were many. Uh, my elder brother is a physician too, so that was an incentive. Uh, we have a lot of physicians in our family. There are always obstacles in the way. It also depends on, on how motivated you are in achieving what you're really trying to achieve. The good part about American Dream is if you have an ambition and you work hard, it's achievable. Uh, people don't regard you as a foreigner if you can provide them service and prove your worth. 
My first brush with M IMI was probably 20 years ago, but I know people in IMI for more than that. I was part of, I was part of the organization in Pakistan when we were providing medical services and medical camps. And so we were involved over there. When a lot of doctors moved here and we had a meeting at Dr. Raji Rizvi's house, then that idea came up that while now we are part of the American system, we should evolve into something that can work best for both worlds. And that's when the idea of IMI came into being. It's definitely a fulfillment of a dream and, and once you are into it, I mean, the way we started, we started this organization from a house meeting. And then we used to organize small events, small uh, meetings, corner meetings in different doctors' houses. And now it has evolved into a big organization. Um, a lot of people joined it once they saw that the services are real and people are sincere irrespective of your religion, caste, and race. We have provided services in different countries um, and when there were really in dire needs in Haiti after earthquakes and relief camps in different countries, India, Pakistan, and uh, other countries. So now a lot of people who know about IMI and they have seen the work. I mean, it's really an amazing journey. Well, the sky is the limit. And as the times change, uh, the requirements change. The biggest requirement, I think, these days, especially in Western societies, uh, is care of the elderly. Uh, it's becoming a big issue among the communities because the newcomers are busy in their lives and sometimes the senior citizens are the ones that sometimes are not taken care of like they should be. So the next big target for the IMI is to organize uh, that part of the community to make them more productive and uh, provide them places where they can interact and uh, be productive. Now we have Dr. Modester Ahmed with us. He is the current president of IMI UK and also an orthopedic consultant. Welcome, Dr. Modester. Thank you very much, uh, Anam. It's a pleasure to be on the program. So, Dr. Modester, would you like to tell us about your association with IMI UK and also IMI's association with Urbane Medical Mission? Okay, so um, currently I'm the IMI uh, president. But previously, I initially started off as an IMI, ordinary IMI member. And what inspired me to join IMI was the Arbain Medical Mission. And, uh, you know, I think this is the really the jewel in the crown of um, uh, one of the services that, Arba, uh, that IMI offers. And um, the ability to uh, go to Arbain, attend the, um, uh, to the, the Zawar of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, as well as do the ziyarat and it's such an honor and such a privilege to be able to do that and you know alhamdulillah by the grace of god i've been able to go for the last five years apart from during the covid year and you know i've made amazing um, friendships it's uh, fantastic working with people from all over all over the world from canada from australia pakistan india you know america yeah. uh, the uk would you, um, Marshall, that's some great work you guys been doing would you like to tell me what kind of work you do when you you know for the urban medical mission in like specific terms to describe to our audience a little bit more okay so basically what happens is we have a team of uh, medical professionals um, and these are they, these are selected on the basis of an application form they fill in. They have a telephone interview, and then subsequently 
that these are rounded down to usually to about 100 people. And what happens is you have two camps that are formed. Uh, one is the Imam Hussein camp and one is the Hazrat Abbas camp. And so the, the group is split and each group has uh, nurses, has doctors, has physiotherapists, mm -hmm. dentists, um, and all the uh, different uh, allied uh, health professionals. And you, it's run basically like an urgent care center. So you have uh, groups of uh, so, uh, three or four groups um, and each of them works an eight hour shift uh, and then you work three eight hour shifts uh, and then you have a, a 24 hour break and then you do the cycle repeats itself um, so my role initially I was just uh, as an ordinary member and for the last uh, three years I was actually the, the, the team or the shift lead uh, so you basically each uh, e each group has a shift lead uh, and then you, the shift leads are reported, uh, you know, the hierarchy is such that Dr. Qasim Jaffi is the head and then you have the shift leads uh, and then you have the individual uh, delegates. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, it's a amazing teamwork. It's um, a high uh, stress environment because there's a, a large volume of, of uh, patients that need to be seen. But mashallah, it's very rewarding. And you know it's a great honor and privilege to be able to do that, mm -hmm. and we have great leadership yeah. from Dr. Qasim Jaffrey and uh, Sakina Rizvi, who uh, you know basically so organize spent six months on... of their life organizing for the event. Yeah. So we all agree that the Brain Medical Mission is one of the IMI's biggest missions or biggest uh, kind of chari humanitarian charitable acts that we do. What other things or uh, projects are there that IMI is doing currently? So IMI does multiple humanitarian projects. Um, uh, it's helped, for example, after the Pakistan earthquake, uh, it's helped after the, the Pakistan floods, it's helped uh, in Haiti, it's helped in numerous uh, after natural disasters. Um, and that's just one of the arms of the IMI. I IMI also does educational activities, uh, helping, uh, you know, mentoring people who want to um, if, for example, uh, change countries and work in, in the UK or the States, um, and you know, there's different programs that we have that we can tailor towards helping people get into those countries, uh, such as give them the advice about which exams they need to do, what, uh, what other registrations they need to complete, um, what attachments they need to do, and, and we have various people who are very experienced who've been through the whole process themselves, and then they're able to mentor and guide people into into the best way to do it um in the uk we have um different uh, we've sort of branched out over the last few years we now have a, a imi youth wing uh we have a women's wing um we have uh the educational side and the mentoring side um and you know mashallah lots of different chapters are opening um all over the world you know especially we have, now have imi europe as well and so you know, lots of activities are going on. So Alhamdulillah, Absolutely. you know, the, the organization is expanding. Yeah. And who do you think can become the uh, member of IMI or uh, broadly speaking, who is IMI for? Who can join us? Uh, anyone who's interested can join. You know, we have uh, associate memberships, we have full members. You know, we, we want to attract the, the youth, the, the students um, and all our allied health professionals. Um, you know, we want to get everyone under the same umbrella so we can help each other, help network, help develop um, our communities and, and give back to society. So, you know, there's no, uh, you know, we want to invite everyone from all different um, you know, communities, backgrounds uh, to join us and, you know, uh, help do this great work that, that uh, has been ongoing for the last 25 years. Yes, yeah, so I've heard lots of stories about how IMI UK in particular have helped in career development and professional development of individuals. Please give some highlights about this. Yeah, so you know we, we like to do um, mentoring. So, for example, if you want to have uh, develop a, or pursue a career in a specific area, we can put you in touch with people in that speciality. We can get them to review your application form. We can get them to guide you into uh, the what type of things you need to do in order to, to tailor your CV, your application form, such that you'll be more competitive and you'll get through the interview process uh, more easily. 
So that's something we 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 want to continue to build on, um, and you know, from uh, time of applying to medical school to to all the way to residency, uh, that's something that we we really want to improve and 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 help as many people as we can. And you know, we've had uh, there's multiple examples of people who are struggling to get into medical school, and uh, we've given them uh, coaching, uh, helped them with their application form. And Alhamdulillah, you, you, they send you a message saying, you know, I was successful, I've got a place at medical school. And, you know, it's Alhamdulillah, it's, it's a great uh, to hear that. And, and it's, it's, it's very rewarding, Alhamdulillah. It is, it is indeed. Can you also tell us about the upcoming Muharram programs? Yeah, so the upcoming Muharram program is, is mainly focused on the youth at the moment. So um, they're similar to in during Ramadan, we had uh, quizzes for the uh, for the young people so there's going to be a daily half an hour uh, program and activities which will take place every on every day of Muharram at four o'clock and um, uh, this will be aimed at the, the, the youngsters and hopefully we'll be having ha some lectures as well um, in the latter end of the uh, of the Muharram uh, to, uh, for the for the older older groups as well so um that's something we're looking forward to that's that's some great work that IMI UK has done in the past year or so thank you so much for your time today dr Melissa. <laughs>
Dr. Hussain Reza Rizvi is a local consultant anesthetic. He works at uh, Glen Clyde Hospital in Wales, and he is the founding member of IMI UK. Dr. Hadi Imam is a clinical microbiologist working at Basildon University Hospital in Basildon, Essex. They both have a long running history with IMI Pakistan and IMI UK. So, Assalamu Alaikum, Dr. Hadi, and Assalamu Alaikum, Dr. Hussain Raza. Wa alaikum salam, anam. Wa alaikum salam, anam. Okay, so Dr. Hussain Raza, would you like to tell me about how IMI UK started? Uh, right, IMI UK was started uh, uh, in 1995. Um, I remember the 29th of May 1995, I moved from uh, Pakistan to UK. Uh, maybe you remember that the 94-95 was the worst period uh, for uh, Shia doctors in Pakistan. Uh, around 100 Shia doctors was martyred in Pakistan, especially in Karachi. So at that time, actually, um, I was too much involved with the uh, Imam student organization, uh, different projects, uh, and a very active member. So, uh, so I moved at that time, 1995, in uh, UK, uh, 29th of May, I remember. From the next day, I started working at the IMI um, as, um, as a you know, senior member of Imam student organization. I must say here, Maktab Ishqa ka dastur nirala dekha. Usko na mili jisne sabak yaad kiya. So we were very much trained to work for organization in Pakistan when we moved uh, when I moved here in UK. So I started uh, the next day I started IMI uh, uh, here in UK and started establishing uh, the IMI. Uh, so uh, from 29th of May uh, till um, three more months uh, we worked very hard. Uh, at that time, remember I visited different countries in UK. And uh, on 2nd of December 1995, um, we have done the first conference of IMI UK. So chapter was born in 29th of May 1995. Uh, you've done so many conferences and seminars in the past few years. And uh, so would you like to give us a brief highlight about those previous conferences and the accomplishment of IMI UK? Uh, right, uh, first conference we've done the uh, 2nd of uh, uh, December 1995. Then we have done the um, uh, second conference in, uh, tw in 97 and 98. Uh, that was a Guilford conference. I remember Mullah Asghar, we, uh, we invited Mullah Asghar. And Mullah Asghar, actually, they called me, they can, uh, can you uh, uh, come to near to me? When, when I come to him, and he said, i never ever seen uh, that much Shia doctors under one roof. And uh, I remember that was a very successful conference. And uh, on that conference, there was a lot of um, uh, uh, the different doctors uh, all over the UK actually attended that one. Uh, then after we have done uh, other conference, nine, uh, uh, 2000 and 2002, 2007. And then uh, last 2008, we had a very big conference here, uh, uh, here in um, uh, Islamic Center. And uh, 2016, we have done a big conference. So we have done every after two to three years, uh, we've we done the conferences here. And uh, the last, uh, actually, two years, I've been uh, appointed as a UK uh, European coordinator. So I was much more involved in the UK uh, uh, European um, uh, activities. Uh, and um, uh, some others, uh, juniors, doctors, actually, they took after um, um, uh, uh, me as a working in the UK. OK. No, the, you, you've done an excellent job. So uh, over to you, Dr. Hadi Imam. We have known, uh, you have belonged to IMI Pakistan for years and years. And then once you moved to IMI UK, you started working for IMI UK as well. Would you like to tell us a bit about your association with IMI? Uh, thank you, Anam. Uh, uh, th that is a very important question for me. And uh, I will say, I might say Yarana Bhat Purana. So I will say uh, I when I was in school, I started to attend the IMI meeting because my uh, uh, elder sister was a doctor. So I uh, gone with her um, all the time. So when I went to the medical school, I'm same the same medical college from the Dr. Hussain, and he's the one of the person who always guide me even in the college. 
So later on in hot job in my residency program, I was uh, involved with the IMI with different projects. I was working on different posts, especially the I was working as a director, a finance finance director in the Pakistan chapter as well. Uh, so in Pakistan, that time was uh, very volatile. Uh, especially the first thing uh, is the Kashmir earthquake. That is a massive operation conducted by the IMI Pakistan, supported by the US chapter. Later on, there is the uh, there is the flood in Sindh, Pakistan. It is a it was also a huge operation, which is led by me <clears throat> on the behalf of IMI Pakistan. So we, I, uh, I was also a member of the disaster management team, which is uh, formed at that time, IMI Pakistan, because of the bomb blast and different issue at that time. So I work, uh, I, I really enjoy to work with the IMI Pakistan and learn a lot of these uh, skills. So that really helpful me in, in my professional life as well. So when I moved okay. to the so UK, when, so did definitely, you... yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm interrupting you, but tell us where, how do you move to UK and uh, how did you then you know get associated with IMI UK? Yeah, so Anam, actually I was working in a, as a consultant in a task force center in Pakistan. I got a scholarship mm -hmm. here, so I came here for a course. I, I complete my degree in molecular diagnosis, and then uh, I move here. Uh, uh, and start work in hospital and uh, and uh, same time I joined the IMI UK chapter. Uh, Hussain Bai was looking after uh, UK chapter at that time. Nowadays I am working as a finance director in my UK chapter. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hadi. Um, Dr. Hussain, would you also tell us a bit about your involvement, involvement with uh, European uh, chapters. So I know we are still establishing some of the new chapters, um, and there are some, uh, you know, fairly old now. Uh, give us a brief about how they are working, um, their programs, and etc. Uh, right. Um, uh, I am I the uh, European, if you can say that. They gave me the task in nearly two, three years ago. And um, since then, actually, uh, what happened, I visited different countries. Um, um, I used to go to uh, every, I mean, different countries every month. Um, I remember I've done the uh, one big conference in Norway. was very successful. And I remember then when we went done the conference, the uh, local um, uh, Ali Medin of that uh, uh, Husseinia, Malana uh, Shamshad, uh, Rizvi, I mean, he said he never seen that much, uh, you know, um, he was not expecting that um, th that that much Shia gathered in that conference. Uh, so we have at that time in, in Norway conference, there were 62 uh, medical professional uh, were gathered. And after that, I worked in um, uh, Denmark. Um, we have got uh, some people in Denmark and also we have got a chapter in Austria. We have got a chapter in Germany. And uh, we have done some work in um, in Malta, and also we have got one representative in Italy. And inshallah, this coming program, Mohoram, we are doing some programs, and also we have got the uh, um, stalls, uh, introduction stalls in uh, in Mohoram, uh, first ten days of Mohoram uh, in Italy, uh, Austria, Germany, Denmark. Norway. So uh, this is the program. Uh, unfortunately, nearly two, uh, two years ago, the, this COVID thing happened. So for that reason, I won't be able to visit. Uh, otherwise, I mean, I used to go every month to different countries. I've been to Romania, Czech Republic, um, uh, Holland, uh, these these places. We have got some doctors in Holland. Uh, so uh, Alhamdulillah, um, slowly and gradually all over the UK, uh, we are uh, spreading the message of Imam Medics International and soon uh, we are going to uh, establish the more chapters in the future. Yes, thank you so much. Also, this question is for both of you, for Dr. Hadi and Dr. Hussain. Uh, please tell us who is Imamia for? So who can benefit from it and uh, who can become a member of IMI UK and IMI Europe? Hadi Bhai, please. Yes, uh, and uh, you are asking about the who is the benefits of for the IMI. 
Uh, yeah, so who right. can become a member of IMI and who is IMI for? So who can join us? Okay, so yeah, uh, thank you so much for your question. As um, uh, Bajib Bhai told me when the, he was decided the name of Imamia, so uh, when the law process is going on in the US, so the lawyer called him that the what's the meaning of the Imamia. So he told he told us that the randomly he said the real follow of Holy Prophet. So our, everyone is uh, open to come and join us in different project who love the Holy Prophet. And uh, uh, we are basically we are the uh, Shia Ibn Shari Shia doctors and paramedics and medical health allied. But few, um, as far as I know, few people is uh, also from the other Muslim class. They can voluntary join us. And in Pakistan, they do some help. I know few people. So everyone can come in different domain. Although this is a health uh, NGO, but uh, I know a lot of the people with different expertise, just like the computer, finance, and different, they help a lot. So they can uh, help and join us. and. Uh, we are open to them and uh, uh, our big theme is that we should be a leading health NGO in all over the world. Absolutely. absolutely. Right. Uh, uh, let, let, me add, let me add some more things, uh, Anam. Um, um, I, I met with uh, Dr. Baji Rizvi in 86, 1986. Um, and I remember uh, when uh, the thing went wrong in Pakistan, you know, I mean, a lot of Shia doctors went martyred, right? And um, we were, uh, it's looking at anything, killing, uh, I mean, killing of uh, Shia doctors was happening in Pakistan. So I spoke with Dr. Baji and Dr. Baji actually supported me uh, to, um, um, I can eject out from, uh, from Karachi to move down here. Um, since then, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, IMI UK supported more than 100 doctors. And uh, mostly from Pakistan, some from India, some from Iraq, some from Iran as well. Uh, but uh, I mean, uh, you can say that when whoever uh, contacted us anywhere from the world, I mean, we are here to help them out. So we supported more than um, 100 uh, doctors. And obviously, they are uh, belong the same faith uh, uh, which we are. Uh, but uh, I mean, if someone wants to know the information, uh, we never hesitate to give them information. Uh, so, Alhamdulillah, this, um, uh, you can say uh, the group is uh, getting bigger and bigger and bigger uh, last 25 years, I mean, more than 25 years now. Yes. So, like you said, uh, we have helped so many professionals and doctors who have moved from Pakistan to the UK. Um, can you give me, like, a, a one a form of example of somebody you know who was trying to, you know, uh, uh, get settled in the UK, uh, who was, you know, starting up his career in the medicine field? Um, and how I am I supported him or her? You can not uh, make it's okay if you don't want to name them. Uh, you can keep them anonymous, but please tell us. It'd be nice to for our audience to hear a bit about it. Oh, the loads, uh, Anna! You can't believe, you know. I mean, there are loads, you know, lots of different stories, lots of doctors, you know. I mean, I can tell you one example. Uh, one of the doctor actually I sponsored in uh, 2002, right? And he's got the consultant post uh, in um, Hull, Hull University Hospital. So I visited him uh, after you can 10, 15 years. So and I stayed there. Over there. He invited me for the dinner, and I, I'm the I'm the person doing locums everywhere in the UK. So I was doing the locum in that area so i uh, he invited me i've been to his house and he said you have to stay in my house i said look i'm on call tomorrow morning i need to go I said no way i'm going to lie down in front of your car right i'm not allowed you to do you are the person who in, uh, you sponsored me and uh, not this is the this is not a one person there's a lot of doctors you i i can tell you i remember Vajib, i um, know that one uh, we receive a letter from one of the doctor uh, he said uh, we live in a village and we have got only roads, we have got no lights. My father is a teacher, right? If I am my support, mm -hmm. if I am my support, I will be do something in the UK. So uh, we sponsored, I remember, uh, I mean, I don't want to tell his name, but you can't believe he's a consultant geriatric in, uh, in one of the biggest hospitals in the UK. And uh, if whenever if someone need any reference or anything, I'll just tell, go and speak with this doctor and he can help, they help him out, help you, help you out. I mean, I don't want to go into details, but there are the some stories I would like to share this, this one. And, uh, you know, the doctor actually now he's a plastic surgeon. 
uh, he's um, I mean there's loads I mean so uh, if I'll go into detail it's take a long time absolutely it's understandable no but even you giving this example it's it just shows that I might have helped people over the years and we've been in this process and we'll continue to keep this you know the same agenda throughout the upcoming years so Dr. Hadi also in the recent years we are very recently I think IMI UK has started and expanding its wings and now we have like women's wing when we also have youth wing so would you like to tell us a bit more about youth wing and okay. how it works uh, and Anand, how we help. Uh, first, okay, thank you, Anam. First of all, I, I want to add some up. Uh, Hussain Bhai uh, didn't explain well. So there is, a, I don't think so if any doctor after the 95 in 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 the UK, especially from, from Pakistan, they, uh, Hussain Bhai didn't help. I might didn't help. So even the if I have a problem, I call Hussain Bhai that a uh, new person is coming. He's always there. Uh, so... Uh, this is open secret, Hussain by MI UK, how they were. And the, recently, there are a lot of the people come. So, I am not helping only the settle down here and also helping in the uh, to select the field for the specialization, even help out to interviews and the selection of job and selection of the career. So, we have a lot of the example, I think, we, even we don't want it. And the, your uh, question regarding me about the youth one, so it was an excellent program recently started and it was run by the different professions. And the special thing is that is not only the doctors and health and allied, other people from the our community, they are inter participate. Just like a few program, mm -hmm. uh, for example, the mental health and the mm -hmm. mental stability mm -hmm. and uh, uh, just like the uh, some uh, issue with the content regarding the how to tackle the interviews, what the problem of new generation. Yeah. So it's excellent, and we have a very good feedback. And if we, uh, especially the speaker, are the one of the best in the UK. They are especially trained for that purpose. Uh, some are doctors, mm -hmm. some are, are teacher. So we have a very great and uh, response uh, response from the community. Yes. Uh, secondly, the women yes. program. Women, so that is uh, also one of the great program in regarding the people who are involved and it is very popular in our community and we have on some more program in pipeline regarding the children's and the women's as well and uh, there is a long detail I do not have right now so yes. uh, oh. most of the topics are covered fine, and we fine. have lots of the topics in let, 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 me add, uh, let me add you some here yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me add some yeah. more. I mean, there, there is a uh, one uh, youth wing. I mean, you know, weekly program, and there's a junior, uh, uh, you know, medical students or the junior they want to be a doctor. Uh, you know, they they are um, conducting this program, and the present, uh, their presentations are excellent. I mean, if you can see, if you can go on a, a Facebook page, and you'll find that one. There's of hundreds and hundreds of likes and uh, views of these uh, programs, and we have done over 14, uh, 15 sessions so far and was uh, very well attended and uh, you know it, it's a very good program and i'm really impressed with the uh, presentation by the junior doctors uh, was excellent program the other one is the hashmi cups uh, you know uh, this is one of the uh, imi uk program uh, for the uh, uh, kids uh, and this is a very popular program in the ramzan we have done uh, was very well attended is the uh, is done by the uh, iram jafri uh, she is the uh, 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 I think teacher in uh, Hoi school uh, in uh, London uh, and uh, and also we have got a one program is coming uh, in Moharram uh, and so far I've heard that when over fi um, 50 uh, registrations been done uh, for the kids so this is one of the program and also in Norway we started a program in uh, Urdu language courses uh, which is a very good program and uh, so there's go on and on and on I mean there's a, uh, lots of things are going on which is very good uh, one thing I must say you know um, uh, the lot of doctors and since when I came here in this uh, 1995 I mean I remember I used to work in a, uh, in a restaurant to raise some money I think I remember yeah. the 20 pound per day um, but uh, alhamdulillah at that time I was uh, I was working for the IMI uh, and uh, mm -hmm. since um, uh, 1995 and I've, got, I've established here I'm a, and I've got the job not a single doctor you can say that may work in a restaurant so the, that was a big achievement for the IMI UK 
for the all the junior doctors are coming here we can help them out for the accommodation if there any problems in the registration something or the, any money problem we can solve um, uh, we can uh, sort that one out then and there yeah also for the last question i'm just going to um, ask dr hussein raza do you have any advice for junior doctors or medical students who are moving from either from imi or either from pakistan and moving to the uk or the ones who are in the uk uh, right jahan dani se bad kar kare jahan bini jigar ko ho to chashme na mein hoti hai nazar paida हजारों साल नरगिस अपनी बेनूरी पे रोती है बड़ी मुश्किल से होता है चमन में दी दवर पैदा दिस इज माय एडवाइस और दिस इज माय हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट फॉर माय जूनियर्स नाउ वी वी लिव्ड आई मीन वी हैव डन व्हाट हैव डन हम यू नो मी वजी भाई वजी भाई इज माय सीनियर बट लास्ट यू कैन से 35 इयर्स आई बीन डूइंग दिस राइट नाउ दिस इज द टाइम फॉर द जूनियर्स कम फॉरवर्ड डू समथिंग we are here to help you out right if you want to know i mean any doctor anywhere any medical students want to move to uk right you have got my number you have got my contact details feel free to contact us we can help you out for any extent i mean we are here if you am any doctor any mommy doctor any problem anywhere in the uk just give me a call and we can sort it out alhamdulillah we have got a good network here um uh, myself actually i'm just doing locum i worked over 105 hospital in uk right so uh, and more than 500 share doctors in my mailing list in my mobile so is there any problem anywhere in the uk just feel free to contact me and or if you want to work here in the uk or if you want to know any information about uh, the how to work how to um, establish in uk and you live anywhere in the world feel free to contact us and we can help you out Yes, thank you so much for your time, both Dr. Hadi and Dr. Hussain Raza. We know it's really, really tough for you know both both of you. You are on your tight schedule, but you still made it up for us. So thank you so much for uh, for your time with us. Thank you very much, Anam and Ashar Bai, and all the I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm TV uh, you know network. I mean, it's a wonderful achievement what we have done that one. I'm really proud of you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Anam. Thank you, Amai. Next, we have a pleasure to conversate with a very special guest, namely Dr. Essen Zethi. He is a foundational member of IMI UK and IMI India for 25 years. He is also a part of IMI Global's Board of Regions. He is a consultant general surgeon in the London United Kingdom. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Anam Thank you for asking me to speak about IMI UK and my involvement with IMI in general. Presently, I am a member of Board of Regents. In the past, my involvement in IMI has been since its inception. I was initially a chapter for India. I have seen IMI grow in these last 25 years. It has been formed with good intentions by Vajir Rizvi, an iconic personality for whom a small Urdu couplet fits and suits him. Chalte hain mehro ma, meri garde pa ke saath. मैं शाहकार सिनत परवर दिगार हूँ विद दिस सिंसे इंटेंशन ही हेज फॉर्म आई एम आई दैट इट हैज रियली प्रोग्रेस्ड ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड इन दीज लास्ट ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स विद ब्रांचेज एंड चैप्टर्स हु सेवेंटीन कंट्रीज एज फार एज माई रोल इन आई एम आई इज कंसर्न 
I was actually host for most of the conferences which IMI held in UK. The one of the best conferences we had was in 2012 under the leadership of Dr. Vasi. The 2012 conference actually was very lucky in a sense that we got Professor Shavi Haider on board who has been a pivotal force in IMI Europe and IMI Global at large. IMI sent me to Karbala to teach, to Qum to see if uh, we could have some joint ventures with the Iranian uh, universities. The best of the conferences which I enjoyed with IMI was in Najaf and Kufa. And I told Vaji, what was that Ilhami, that divine moment in which you actually thought about this conference? It was a grand success. And uh, while sitting in the auditorium, which was one of the coldest auditorium I have ever sat in, in the Haram of Abba Abdullah. I could feel that once we go to heaven, Jannatul Hussain would be something like this. IMI in these years has helped a lot of students to get attachment. As I was a tutor and educator, I managed to get them attachments and jobs uh, in different specialties. IMI Europe has recently been formed and is now truly Europe under the leadership of uh, Hussein Raza, extending as far as Norway, Germany. In UK, IMI was slow to actually uh, flourish. The reason was that we could not involve senior consultants, but since the involvement of the younger generation, especially I see dynamic secretaries like Anam, Rizvi, we have involved uh, the youngsters and they are doing a lot of functions uh, to uh, propagate IMI in UK. They have been having uh, seminars on and webinars on COVID, on different mental health problems. And it is really active under the leadership of uh, uh, Dr. Mudassir. We have been lucky in, lucky in the past that uh, we have had Dr. Fatima and Dr. Ali Mehindi, who were uh, very staunch supporters of I, IMI and worked towards the progress we are seeing today. I personally know many doctors who have benefited from IMI, uh, different programs, internship programs, uh, educational programs. In fact, I would not hesitate to take the name of Hussein Raza, who has been singularly very active since the days he was not even registered as a doctor uh, in UK. Both husband and wife ha have done a lot of work for IMI. IMI has got a lot of big roles and big goals and it will in, in years to come uh, be very, very uh, beneficial for the entire community. They have sent disaster teams to different uh, countries. They have recently done a lot of work in India in the COVID uh, crisis, sending a lot of uh, uh, ventilators almost in each and every small town of India, which is very commendable. IMI has been uh, formed with very good intentions and I'm sure 
It has got a galaxy of uh, doctors who actually support it. In UK, now the consultant involvement is increasing. But the best part is that the younger generation from UK are getting involved. And that is what we need. I, I think if I say that IMI in years to come will be the only organization looking after the welfare of the Jaffrey community in particular and humanity at large. I wish the IMI team in UK and the headquarters which have always been very helpful uh, to propagate this good cause. On the eve of 1st of Muharram, uh, we wish uh, uh, IMI that the, this Muharram we can celebrate with the sincere thoughts and uh, achieve the goals of Abdullah has uh, uh, taught us so that the humanity at large benefits. My good wishes are with the IMI UK team and Dr. Mudassir and I take this opportunity to actually uh, thank Professor Shabi who has been so instrumental in organizing these conferences every uh, fortnight involving so many uh, speakers from different parts of the world. We will not live, but I am sure IMI will progress. In the end, I will just end with a couplet. Miri awaz ko mehfuz kar lo, ke mere baad sanata bahut hai. My name is Romina, Romina Qureshi. I was born and raised in Karachi. I got a bachelor's uh, in psychology, philosophy and French. Then I got married and moved to the US. And I've been here for 28 and a half years. I was always interested in doing some kind of work uh, that uh, dealt with the community in, in one way or the other. So I've always been part of uh, Pakistani associations and school associations and things like that. For the last about 11 years, I have also been teaching part-time. I teach Urdu. I was at University of Pennsylvania. Now I'm with Kane University. I also do teacher training at NYU. Uh, I, this past summer, I finished my master's in Urdu. It was not my plan, uh, but it really happened by chance. A good friend of mine, um, she taught at Penn, and they have a summer program. It's called Star Talk and it was being introduced um, at University of Pennsylvania and she asked me if I would be interested and I said, sure. The students, it's a mix. So when we were in uh, University of Pennsylvania, we had heritage students. The heritage students are people who have parents from Pakistan who have some, con some connection to Pakistan. They have grown up hearing the language. Um, they may or may not be able to speak it very well, but they do understand. Then we had non-heritage students, which would be your non-Desi students um, who had zero proficiency in the language. This language is part of, like I said, the start of program and it, uh, it's, it's a bunch of, they have about 11 or 12 critical languages, what they call, and, um, and Urdu is, is part of that. So I think the American government also wanted uh, the, the American kids to know more than one language. 
I first heard about IMI when I first moved to New Jersey. Um, so I had heard about these IMI camps. Uh, I'd heard about uh, the medical camps. I think they would come to the to the Imam Barga and they would do free uh, health screening. So I had heard the name IMI quite a while back. I didn't exactly know the extent of their work. Not until in 2016, that's when, I, that's when a friend of mine started working here and she started telling me of all the work they do and I was very impressed. And um, that is when I first heard about IMI. So I am the administrative uh, associate here, uh, the administrative person, and I do a little bit of everything. Um, so I I can be the first point of contact some, if somebody has a question, uh, if they have to, to find something out about an event or something, they would email me uh, or email I might would be forwarded to me. Um, I keep a track of the membership, I keep a track of the database, I uh, do administrative stuff like writing letters, Majib Bahai is a whole bunch of things for me um, to do. IMI doesn't just work in one part of the world. We are, you know, based out of several countries in five continents of the world. So you will find offices uh, and work being done in not just the US, but of course, India, Pakistan, Iraq, Iran, Tanzania, South Africa, Austria, New Zealand. Uh, no, not Austria, New Zealand, Australia, England, all parts of the world. Work is not just health related. Uh, there's a lot of other things that are being done like uh, for education of students, for orphans, for uh, you know paying for people's uh, uh, tuitions and uh, fees and things like that. So the, I mean the scope is huge. It's, it's not just one thing. It's, it's, it's really it's, it's everything uh, it's everything combined in one. It's, I can't even begin to say how many things good things they do. You know, we have thousands of people who support IMI, you know, through volunteering, through, through you know, helping out with different projects. But to run these projects, we need the money. Working here, I know that 100% of the donations that come in go towards these projects world over. So uh, the projects are, are, you know, are getting more and more. There are so many worthy projects. And uh, yeah, to run these projects well, we need we need donations we need we need memberships we need monthly donations to be lined up and really i mean we have so many options we have even for the students we have the option of a dollar a day so if you can afford a dollar a day give it to imi give 30 dollars a month if you can donate more than that do that i mean my own daughter i mean she's she's signed up i tell her to have a friend sign up i've had all my family so if you donate to imi Talk to your friends, talk to your family, have them donate. It doesn't have to be thousands of dollars a month. It can be a dollar a day and it will make a difference because the wonderful projects, and you can look at them online, uh, we have a whole bunch of projects going on.
As we know that COVID is ongoing and we have a Zadari on hand. So let's see what precaution we have to take during Muharram. Let's hear from the experts. Today, I'm going to talk to you about COVID vaccine efficacy. There are several different types of vaccine in use and development globally at this time. These include the RNA and DNA vaccines, for example, Pfizer and Moderna, the viral vector vaccines, such as Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca, protein-based vaccines, which are currently in development, and inactivated or weakened virus vaccines, such as Sinopharm and Sinovac. Vaccine efficacy depends not only on the type of vaccine, but also how that particular vaccine was stored, transported, and prepared. Vaccine efficacy also depends on other host-related factors, such as the host immune system, um, age, and other factors which are yet to be determined. All COVID-19 vaccines, which are currently authorized for use in the U.S. and approved by the WHO, helped protect people against COVID-19, including severe illness, in clinical trial settings. We should be cautious in comparing trials of different COVID-19 vaccines, since the trials used different ways in order to measure the efficacy of the vaccine. So far, studies that have looked at how COVID-19 vaccines work in real-world conditions, known as vaccine effectiveness studies, have shown that these vaccines are working well. Most vaccine effectiveness data now available are related to the messenger RNA vaccines, because these vaccines have been available for longer. These vaccines reduce the risk of COVID-19, including severe illness, among people who are fully vaccinated by 90% or more. CDC and other experts continue to study the effectiveness of both messenger RNA vaccines and the Johnson & Johnson's Janssen COVID-19 vaccine in real-world conditions. Real-world data from vaccine effectiveness studies have shown that receiving only one dose of these messenger RNA COVID-19 vaccines provides some protection against COVID-19, at least in the short term. However, for the messenger RNA vaccines, these studies have shown that two doses provide better protection than one dose. To receive the most benefit from vaccination, people should get the recommended number of doses of vaccine. After the vaccine is administered, it typically takes about two weeks for the body to build protection. You are considered fully vaccinated two weeks after the second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. The benefit of the vaccine is not just for the individual themselves, but also for the community, since if there are less COVID-19 cases, there is reduction in spread of the virus. There is increasing evidence that COVID-19 vaccines also provide protection against COVID-19 infections without any symptoms, which are known as asymptomatic infections. These asymptomatic patients can still transmit the virus to others. COVID-19 vaccination can reduce the spread of disease overall, helping to protect people around you. Is there a vaccine booster? We know that most vaccines work well with a boost. We do not know exactly how long the COVID-19 vaccines can protect people. More information is needed on the decline of antibodies and based on real-world data, which will be obtained over time. We do have recent data from Pfizer that shows the efficacy of their vaccine declines by about 6% every two months. Data from Pfizer also suggests that protection from COVID may decline after about six months. Israel is the first country to take steps to authorize boosters for those who are over 60 years old. 
Pfizer plans to ask U.S. regulators this month to authorize booster shots of its two-dose vaccine, arguing that a third shot may be needed to protect against the evolving virus. Moderna also said it expects to ask the FDA to authorize its booster shots in September this year. So what should be our expectations for the vaccines going forward? Most likely, the vaccines will achieve a massive reduction in lethality and transmission, but they will not completely prevent infection with the virus that causes COVID-19. The vaccines are not going to achieve elimination of SARS-CoV-2 from the circulation, like was achieved for smallpox. But this means that once sufficient people receive the vaccines, COVID-19 won't have to cause panic and fear. It can be considered like how we react to the flu, for example, serious but not a cause for panic. Our world will hopefully return to normal once most people globally have been vaccinated, but the new normal will be a world with SARS-CoV-2, and so outbreaks of COVID-19 and cases of COVID-19 will still happen just like cases of colds and flu continue to happen. In summary, all COVID-19 vaccines, which are currently available in the US and approved by the WHO, are effective in preventing COVID-19 as seen in clinical trial settings. Research provides evidence that messenger RNA COVID-19 vaccines offer similar protection in real-world conditions. COVID-19 vaccination is an important tool to help stop the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 vaccination helps to protect people from getting sick or severely ill with COVID-19 and might also help to protect people around them. To receive the most protection, people should receive all recommended doses of a COVID-19 vaccine. Some people who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 will still get sick because no vaccine is 100% effective. Experts continue to monitor and evaluate how often this occurs, how severe their illness is, and how likely a vaccinated person is to spread COVID-19 to others. Thank you very much. Pakistan's healthcare system has been on a back seat for a very long time. With a shocking less than 3% of its GDP allocated on healthcare expenditure, much of the 212 million population struggles to find quality and affordable health care. According to a 2017 World Bank report, Pakistan has only 6.3 hospital beds for every 10,000 people. After 27 years of exhaustive service for the community, with the establishment of several clinics across Pakistan, maintaining a life-saving ambulance services network, providing karze hasna and scholarships to countless medical professionals and healthcare workers, running an excellent 24-7 blood transfusion service, and fighting the COVID pandemic from Gilgit, Baltistan, Parachinar to Thar Desert, Imamia Medics International is positioned to serve humanity at an entirely new level. University and Medical Complex is IMI's contribution to shoulder the dismal state of healthcare in Pakistan. 
in one of the top 10 most populous cities in the world. IMI, along with Bakar Health and Education Welfare Trust, with the support of Zaidi Abad Foundation USA, are working together to construct a state-of-the-art 500-bedded hospital. A bold and sophisticated healthcare initiative that will provide world-class medical care to the community at a fraction of cost. This 10-story building will host state-of-the-art medical facilities and will be backed by a highly skilled international faculty. This project will cost approximately 8 to 10 million US dollars. 2 million dollars is required urgently to start the construction immediately. Life begins in hospitals and it often ends in hospitals. And in between, we try to avoid hospitals as much as we can. But we live our lives hoping to get a great as opportunity as this that will create a support system which will touch the lives of so many of our fellow citizens. Halmin Nasirin Yansurina, is there anyone to help me? We call on you to become the Ansar of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, to help further the cause of saving humanity one life at a time. Help create a future hospital that will ensure the highest level of healthcare for generations and be the pride of the community. A showcase project that the community could be proud of. Labbay Kya Hussain. Thank you for watching a special transmission today. Please follow us and support us on our social media pages on Facebook and YouTube. Please also give your valuable feedback to us on the information showing on your screens. The wonderful work of My TV won't be possible without the generous donors like yourself. Spread the word and grow the network. Thank you.